Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. In this edition, we'll be setting up an Annex 2 ABDH Rio Gateway to upgrade an existing Data Highway Plus Panel View to a newer Ethernet IP Panel View Plus 6 or 7 to connect to a PLC 5. This diagram shows the DHP addresses and IP addresses of the hardware I'll be using. Note that this configuration will also work for upgrading to PanelView Plus 7. In this video, we'll quickly go through the steps to use the gateway's default IP address. We'll create a configuration file to route a PanelView Plus IP address request to the PLC5 DH Plus node address. We'll use the Annex 2's onboard web interface to configure the IP settings and to upload the configuration file with the DH Plus network configuration settings and routing. And finally, we'll go into Factory Talk View Studio to create a shortcut from the panel view to the Annex 2 gateway. So, to begin, I'll plug the Annex 2 into a switch that my PC is plugged into as well. I'll open a browser and enter the gateway's default IP address. If the page doesn't come up for you, it's likely that your computer is not on the same subnet. There are a few quick steps that can fix that. First, we'll open up the command prompt and find out the current IP address of the computer you're using. If you're using Windows 7, you need to open the command prompt as an administrator. We'll type ipconfig, and what we need is the IPv4 address. This is the IP address that my computer is using. When you find yours, write it down, and we'll enter a command that will tell the computer to route the Annex 2's default address. I'll type route add 169.254.0.0 mask 255.255.0.0 the IP address that your computer is using metric 20 hit enter and if everything was entered correctly you'll be able to access the Annex 2's web page and once the gateways web page loads I'll expand administration on the sidebar and select Annex configuration here, the Annex 2 can be configured to use a static IP address, or it can be configured to obtain its IP from a DHCP server. In most cases, you'll want to use a static IP address, otherwise the DHCP server could assign a different IP address each time the Annex powers up. Any software that's configured to access the Annex 2 would have to be reconfigured, so I'll select Static. Next, I'll assign a host name and set the static IP settings for the Annex 2 gateway. It's important to use a meaningful host name because we'll be using it later. I'll enter the static IP address that I want to use. This is on my computer's IP range, so I can access the gateway's web page without routing a path. If you will ultimately be installing the gateway on a different subnet than the one used by your computer, you should enter that IP address at the last step of the configuration. So I'll enter the subnet mask and gateway address. Finally, I'll change the firmware type to ANX AB DHP. When all this is entered, click Submit to complete the configuration and click continue to reboot the Annex with the new configuration. We'll wait 60 seconds to let the gateway reboot before clicking continue again. So now we can enter the new IP in the address bar and it will take us back to the Annex 2's web page. And there you have it. As a side note, if you change the module's firmware type without changing the IP address, and go through the reboot process, you'll have to clear your browser's recent cache to see the new firmware type reflected on the Annex 2's main page. Now I can move on to configuring the gateway's Data Highway Plus settings. I'll expand Automation Network in the sidebar and select Configure DH Plus Network. Here I can select the baud rate, Mine is at 57K, and I can set the node address for the Annex 2 gateway. 
Mine will be station 15, which is the same address as the old panel view that I'm migrating from, although any unused address will work fine. Click Submit to apply the settings. Next, we'll need to configure the Data Highway Plus HMI alias. This is done through a template file, which we'll refer to as the main configuration file. This is a CSV file that will define the parameters of the DH Plus network that I'll be connecting to. You can get the template file from the product disk that came with the gateway, or it can be downloaded from the Annex to ABDH Rio page on the ProSoft Technology website. Open up the file in the text editor of your choice. I'll use Microsoft Excel for this step. You can see that there are several lines of instructions for the template. Down here you can see a list of strings for alias IPs and the DHP addresses they connect to. On one side we have the alias IP address x.x.x.100. We'll leave the x's there in the first three octets of the address. The Annex 2 will fill these in using the first three octets of the IP address that we assign to it. Then we have a dash greater than sign and then the DHP node address 0000, and this is in octal form, of course. The alias IP that I'm using here should be based on what's described here. Just be sure that there are no conflicts with any other IPs on your network. And this will route to Data Highway Plus node address 30, which is the address of my PLC5 on the DHP network. Finally, I'll remove the semicolon at the front of the string so that this line will be read by the Annex 2. And if I need to add another panel view plus terminal, I would just move down to line 2, change the IP address and node address as needed, and remove the semicolon as well. This is what the string should look like in a simple text editor, such as Notepad, by the way. That's all we have to do here. I'll save the file and we'll return to the NX2's web page. I'll select Configure DH Plus HMI IP Alias now. I'll click on the Browse button, and I'll browse for and select the file we just saved, and click Open. Click Send to Annex. And once we see the contents of the file open, we know that the upload was successful. So now we'll go down and hit the reboot link at the bottom of the screen and this will reboot the module with the new configuration file. And we'll wait 60 seconds for the reboot to complete. Once that's done we'll click continue. Expand log files and we'll look at the HMI IP alias log. Here we can see that the alias was configured successfully. IP 10.1.2.10 is now DHP 0030. Now that I have the main configuration file ready, I can move on to Factory Talk View Studio to set up the connection on the panel View Plus 6. We'll open up Factory Talk View Studio and we'll create a new project. And I'll just name it DHP HMI and click Create. Once the project opens over in the sidebar, Go down to RS Links Enterprise and select Communication Setup. And this is where we will define the path from the panel view to the gateway. In the design window, right click on the Ethernet driver and select Add Device. In the window that pops up, we'll expand Ethernet PLC devices. And I can now pick a PLC5 profile from the list. In this case, I'm going to select a 1785L20C PLC5 20C. Essentially, the Annex 2 emulates a PLC5 for the HMI. So you don't necessarily have to select the PLC5 that you're actually using. Any of the PLC5 profiles on the list should work. In the Device Properties window, I'll enter the alias IP address that I assigned in the configuration file that will map to the DHP node. Click OK. Now we're going to add a shortcut to the IP address of the alias. In the Device Shortcuts panel, click Add. And give it any name you like. I'm just going to call it DHP. 
We'll apply the shortcut to our alias IP address. Click yes to accept the shortcut. And finally, click copy from design to runtime. Click yes and click OK at the bottom of the screen to apply the changes that we've made. Now we can return to the main display and we'll add a numeric display from the menu bar. In the numeric display properties window, go to the connections tab and click under the value cell. Right click on the project and choose refresh folders. At this point, we should be able to use our numeric display to scan the DHP files in the PLC5. And here you can see the files. And that's how you configure an Annex 2 AV Rio DH Plus HMI gateway. If you have any questions or would like to see more training videos, visit our website at www.prosoft-technology.com. Happy training!